What's up everyone, I'm back for another reaction. This one's to a video called Systems Theory and the Synchronization of Metronomes. Uh, I jumped a little to the beginning, but... Sorry if, if I'm a little nasally. If you start these metronomes at different times, they will never fully sync up with each other. After five minutes of continual movement, this is still the case. But if you place these same five metronomes on two bottles, like this, something different happens. I just love this. After 33 seconds, all five metronomes are synchronized. Not one stepping out of line or disrupting the pattern. Now, why does this happen? Well, finding the answer involves a scientific theory called systems theory. Discovered by Dutch scientist Christian Huygens in 1665, Systems theory proposes that in one way or another, everything is connected to each other in one overall system. Fish and starlings use it as a survival mechanism, and it can be applied to studies from biology to engineering. But how did systems theory relate to the metronomes? First, you need to understand this. The combination of the boards and bottles, or rollers, is called a coupling device. However, in this particular example, only cylindrical objects can function in a coupling device. Their surface is spherical, and because of this, they can therefore roll. This coupling device is used so the metronomes' arms, or pendulums, can freely change amplitude. The amplitude is the amount of distance a pendulum goes from the center of the metronome, or when it is standing upright, right here, to when it is all the way to the right or left, like right here. When the metronomes are stationary on the table and without a coupling device, their amplitude stays the same forever. But when you add a coupling device, the metronomes then have the option to freely change their amplitude whenever they want. This allows the metronomes' movement to sync up with each other until they are all working together as a system. But it isn't only the metronomes' changing amplitude that makes them become synchronized. If this was the case, it would mean a game of luck as to when all five metronomes would be synced at the same time. Instead, the metronomes' power of sync is also determined by the mechanical energy they send out and phase and antiphase. Each metronome transfers mechanical energy to the board and then to the rollers in the coupling device. When two or more metronomes are in phase, this just means that their pendulums are moving in the same direction. Okay, so just some thoughts so far. So, so... First of all, the metronomes only sync up when the surface that they're on, they're able to basically transmit from one another. And they don't sync up when the surface is basically unmovable. It's rigid it's uh, unable to transmit the vibrations the from one to the other and like everything else this applies to everything else such as society and syncing up with with one another and when we have a rigid surface that we're on where we can't uh, tr feel each other we can't transmit through it because we're stuck in this specific way of living that's prescribed to us by our overlords
then basically we don't sync up and then uh, it's not good <laughs> but if we have like a, a more malleable surface something that's where uh, free exchange of information uh, just free exchange is allowed then the flow the transmission from one to the other is allowed and from one to many and many to one and so they can sync up let's keep going though at the same speed and with the same amplitude anti-phase is the opposite of phase and it is when you guessed it two metronomes as pendulums are moving in the opposite direction but are still in the same speed and the amplitude. So, in this set of five metronomes, these two are in antiphase and these two are in phase. When the metronomes are in antiphase, the energy the metronomes produce cancel each other out and no new force is added to the coupling device. Let's go back to our example from before. If there was a coupling device under the metronomes, the two metronomes that are in anti-phase wouldn't add any new force to the coupling device. But because these two are in phase, their energy combines, and this added force helps the metronomes get closer to being synchronized. So, because the metronomes are on a coupling device, because they can freely change their amplitude, because the metronomes can get into anti-phase and phase with each other, they can therefore send out mechanical energy that forces the coupling device to get them to synchronize with each other in the same direction and at the same speed and amplitude. And in this particular example, all of this happens in 33 seconds. Which is also something that's there is that it happens in a relatively short period of time where we can observe the syncing up and more and more coming in sync and then even when one's out of sync closer to being synchronized so because the metronomes are on a coupling device because they can freely change in phase with each other they can therefore send out mechanical like energy here, it's that forces the coupling the last device one comes in sync with the others in the same direction and at the same speed and amplitude but it it can be off sync but because the others are in sync <laughs> then uh as long as there's like a malleability to the surface between them then uh we can come together pretty much <laughs> and resonate as one be as one function as one vibrate as one <laughs> just be one <clears throat> So I think it's kind of cool that metronomes do that. And there's lots of videos of them. Let's see. Doesn't look like much is going on. Pretty much everything's out of sync. We're starting to see the blue and pink on the left starting to sync up with the, the line that's in there in more and more. But the rest are pretty out of sync. Now, the second and third row are starting to be more as one and the th and the fourth row too as well <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
Now the first one also. I don't know this orange one at the end here. Seventh row is all in sync. Oh, sixth row. No, they're just in sync. There's just a few that are out of sync completely, which is interesting. So, like, everything's in sync, but the ones that are not in sync are, like, anti. They're completely out of sync. But then even those ones start to be through the collective uh, brought into sync with the rest even though it's still out of sync here we go how long is it gonna be it's just sitting one of them that's crazy it's just one just one out of sync over here <laughs> oh it's it's getting in sync now there it goes there it goes And there we go. That's how it goes. All right. So that's kind of my thoughts on that is that we can actually take something from this and consciously consider it in our outlook on society and the really the only way we're all in sync is when we're all in sync which is all as one system not all as many different systems which is when we're out of sync like at the beginning many different systems functioning functioning completely out of sync with one another and so it's just in like a disarray there's not like a like a magnet where everything's in alignment it's more and so there's this macroscopic observation of magnetism whereas in something that's not in alignment it's just not magnetic it's, it doesn't have that same pull, pull on the environment around it, essentially. <clears throat> Alright guys and gals, thanks for watching. See you next time.